Welcome to another presentation brought to you by Understanding Minds, a clinic specialising in the developmental and learning disorders, including reading difficulties, language disorders, ADHD and the autism spectrum, and child and youth mental health. And by Understanding Words, an evidence-based reading intervention for children with reading difficulties. Hi, this presentation describes some research that Liz Conlon from Griffith University and I have been conducting on whether methylphenidate or Ritalin may improve response to reading intervention in children who have both dyslexia and ADHD. The paper was presented at a recent neuroscience conference in Sydney and we've recently added to the data and we're preparing a paper for publication. Dyslexia and ADHD occur in about 5 to 10% of the population. Uh, there's an overlap of somewhere between 50 and 40%. Um, in learning support settings and, and classrooms, many if not most students uh, who have reading difficulties will also have attention problems. What do we know about, us, about attention, stimulant medication and reading? There's evidence that stimulants improve child performance on laboratory measures and that it improves students' application, output and behaviour. However, there's limited evidence that stimulants improve reading. There's been some recent suggestion that attention is involved in learning to read, but there's also basically no evidence to support that claim at this point. The two things that Liz and I are interested in at the moment are whether ADHD or um, symptoms of ADHD or symptoms of attention deficits affect response to reading intervention in children who also have um, dyslexia. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, the question that we're answering specifically in this study is whether methylphenidate or a, a trade name of Ritalin improves response to reading intervention. In this particular study, we're reporting two single cases. The first um, case as a nine-year-old male with mixed dyslexia and ADHD, combined type. Um, boy has a significant paediatric history, lots of medication had been tried previously. He's a very poor reader when we first began the study. So at, at initial assessment, just give a few examples here, on the, um, we can see here his, um, his spelling scores on the, on the Wyatt, um, standard score of 66, which is more than two standard deviations below the mean. His word level reading skills on the Castles and Coltart word lists, again, more than two standard deviations below the mean. And his scores on the Neal analysis of reading ability um, were in the first percentile for both accuracy and comprehension. So better than 81% of kids his age. This despite having above average IQ and good oral language skills. The second client was a female, nine years, mixed dyslexia and ADHD combined type. Similar sorts of levels of reading skills. So, Castles and Coltart word lists, again, two to two and a half standard deviations below the mean. Neil reading accuracy in the second percentile, comprehension in the eighth percentile. So, again, particularly poor reader. Okay, so the treatment protocol, uh, though, was slightly different for both participants because they were case studies of convenience, so they were clinical cases rather than kids who were recruited specifically for research. <coughs> Excuse me, so um, uh, ethically we, we couldn't actually um, uh, design a study, we, we actually had to just go with um, what we're presented with in clinical practice. Um, the, the first client was given a no treatment baseline of six weeks, then he received reading remediation for 11 weeks, we had a second baseline period where he received no treatment, then a second treatment period where he received reading intervention, and then a third treatment period where he received combined medication and reading intervention. The second client participant had a six week no treatment baseline, then she got the combined medication and reading intervention, followed by a second baseline where she didn't receive reading intervention but received the methylphenidate or the medication on its own. Okay, <clears throat> so the, the treatment program we used was understanding words. 
without going into too much detail, anyone who, who wants more information can go to the ubiquitous Google and Google Understanding Words and find the website. Basically, at heart, it's a synthetic uh, phonics program that also teaches high-frequency, irregular words, vocabulary, oral sentence comprehension, figurative language, inferences, and so on, when, when necessary. There's considerable information. We've now got four or five papers, um, uh, published papers on its effectiveness. So there's considerable information for its um, efficacy. Okay, what do we measure? We use the Castles and Coulter regular, irregular, and non word lists at the be beginning and end of each stage. The NEAL to measure text reading accuracy and comprehension. And we used a curriculum based measure of non word reading, which we took uh, weekly to measure reading growth. Okay, these are example data from the male client. You can see in the first baseline period, <coughs> excuse me, uh, given there's no treatment, we're expecting no trend for growth, which is exactly what you see. In the second period here, he was receiving the understanding words treatment. Now, normally you would expect good response to intervention. That's what we've seen in, in previous studies. But in this case, uh, there was no growth whatsoever. And this is receiving four times weekly treatment for about 40 minutes from an experienced teacher, so someone who, who has um, demonstrated they're a good teacher in, in previous studies. We then had uh, the second baseline fortuitously was the Christmas holiday period, so no treatment at all. Again, no growth across that period. Second period of intervention using understanding words. Again, very frustrating six-week period with little to no growth. Lots of repetitive mistakes, having to go over and over and over rules. Frustrating for both teacher and, and um, the participant. Um, at this point here, we decided enough was enough, and we decided to try the combined um, Ritalin, methylphenidate, and uh, the reading treatment. And you can see that at that point, the combined treatment has precipitated quite steep growth in reading ability. So that's when he really started to, to improve. We have additional data now showing that um, um, when he was, when we withdrew the reading treatment and he was on the medication alone, that didn't actually improve reading ability. So we got a, 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 a basically another uh, flat line, and then bringing the reading treatment back in, so having the combined treatment precipitated further growth in, in reading ability. You see similar sorts of trends with the castles and Coulter word lists. So up until this point, regardless of whether the baseline or treatment periods, we've had basically no growth. And as soon as we began the, the combined medication reading treatment, we got growth in all measures. Same thing again with the Neil text reading accuracy and comprehension. No growth up to this point, where he's um, just had the reading intervention including that the medication has seems to have led to growth in both accuracy and comprehension, and quite, quite steep growth, particularly compared to um, his previous performance. In the second case, remember we had a, um, a five-week baseline there, um, so you'd expect no improvement uh, across that time, as we see. Um, we then introduced both treatments together, so the combined group, which is um, led to an upward trend in, in, in reading ability. During the second baseline here, the girl was just on, on the medication. And of course, we we're expecting that um, uh, we'd have little to no growth in, in reading ability, which is exactly what we found, which sort of um, indicates, it's not confirmed, but it indicates that um, um, medication alone doesn't improve reading ability. The trends are less clear for the Castles and Coulter word list, but you can see particularly in non-word reading that there, there's a trend for steeper growth during the treatment period and a trend for basically no growth uh, when she was on the medication alone. Similarly for the Neil, limited, limited growth here across the, the, the baseline periods, much sharper growth during treatment and no growth during the, the second baseline where she was just using the medication. So what are our conclusions from this study? Well, some students who have both ADHD and dyslexia may not respond well to good reading treatment alone. 
some students who have ADHD and dyslexia may respond better to the combined treatment of methylphenidate and, and reading instruction. And, and that's important because a lot of our students in learning support, learning support or special ed um, settings have both of these conditions and it suggests that if we don't treat both of them, uh, we are possibly or perhaps probably not going to be effective in our, in our treatment. Um, the hypothesis that, that Liz and I are making at the moment is that if reading ability is above a certain threshold, so if you're a good reader and, and reading is basically automatic, ADHD is not going to impair your reading. But if reading is below a certain level, having ADHD or even milder symptoms of attention deficit may exacerbate the problem by impairing your response to intervention. The question is how? The hypothesis Liz and I are making is that um, attention is involved in a, a general learning mechanism, so it's not involved in, in, in reading directly, but it's involved in a general learning mechanism. And if you have ADHD, that general learning mechanism is impaired, the methylphenidate improves it, hence the better response to reading intervention. So the final message is, for, particularly for teachers and for, for, for other clinicians, is that when children have uh, reading difficulties, it's almost a 50% bet that they'll also have some attention problems. Um, and, and many of those kids will also be or should be diagnosed with ADHD. Um, if we don't treat the ADHD, it may significantly impair or retard their response to reading intervention. So we must.